another reason that the Hokies have not lost since the game in Cameron. And of course, Duke has won four out of five. But if his Virginia Tech is going to have a chance tonight, Kitley and Amor have to play well again. Duke coming into this one, the first place team in the ACC. They are 22-3 and 12-2 and and in the conference. The Hokies, winners of their last four in a row, 20-4 and 7-4 and and in the ACC. We're going to have a fun one here. Duke in the gray and blue. The Hokies in the all maroon here today. And boy, this is going to be a fun one. Both teams like to play man-to-man. -man. And so far, so good for Celeste Taylor. The senior from Valley Stream, New York, puts the Blue Devils on top. Nice little set play there. She got off, cut off the screen right there, got a wide open layup. Feed to Kitley and a baseline jumper ready to tie it up. Georgia Amor set a great screen down low, got Kitley wide open on the baseline. She didn't have any wide open looks the last time. Take a look at the Duke starting five. Reagan Richardson, a name to watch out for. Sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. It's actually her birthday today, coming off of a great performance against Miami and Boston College. And Virginia Tech able to force the turnover. Interesting matchup right there. Georgia Amor on Celeste Taylor. Celeste Taylor has a size advantage, and Duke went to her on the first two possessions. And Georgia Amor, the co-national player of the week. Hokies hit eight threes in the first quarter against Florida State and really one of the more shocking starts of the season in any ACC game. See if Virginia Tech can do that here though. Duke, one of the most solid defensive teams not only in the ACC but in the country. Shot clock down to five. Amor off of the screen. Over to Kayana Trailer has to get a shot off. And a foul is called, a timely one for Virginia Tech. And Trailer will go to the line for two. You won't see Duke make too many defensive mistakes, but that was run right there. They bailed Virginia Tech out, fouling the jump shooter at the buzzer of the shot clock. The Hokies had to rush up a shot, and here is Kayana Trailer. Started out the season coming off of the bench as a weapon for Virginia Tech. And with the injury to Ashley Owusu, Trailer has sort of morphed into a really reliable guard for Virginia Tech in the starting lineup. She was reliable off the bench and now in the starting five. Yeah, Kenny Brooks has kind of had to reinvent the Hokies on offense and defense several times this year with injuries. Well, the Hokies come into this one 10 and 4 in the conference. Trying to vie for an ACC regular season title. There's still a possibility, but they need some help. They certainly need to win this one. Lost the ball. Virginia Tech forces yet another turnover. Yeah, Carol nice play. Go ahead, Mac. Nice play right there. Virginia Tech changed, put Taylor's soul on Celeste Taylor, and the Georgia Amor in the help side reached in and knocked that ball off Taylor. Duke in the full court press on all dead balls. Kara Lawson looking on in her third season as the head coach, talked about her team, how they have changed from last year's team to this year's team. Said they're a lot more defensively sound, and you can see it right there with a the trap. Almost got Taylor's soul in trouble. Another baseline jumper for Liz Kitley. If Kitley can get open looks from eight to 10 feet, you know how deadly she can be, Bailey. Now, last time out against Duke, Liz Kitley really got beat up in the low block. Now it looks like the Hokies game plan is to push Kitley out a little bit and really work those mid-range shots. Speaking of mid-ranges, that one does not go and Virginia Tech starting to push the pace again. Amor. Kitley trying to work on Kennedy Brown, backing in one-on-one. -on -one. She's got it. Kitty Brooks has tweaked a few things. That one happened in transition, but those first two Kitley got were out of little tweaks in the offense. Well, Liz Kitley only had four points the last time out against the Blue Devils. She has already been able to exceed that here. Nice job by Duke in defensive transition right there. They don't get beat down the floor very often. Another inside ball to Kitley. No foul called. Balagoon got all ball, says the referees, and Virginia Tech will keep it under the basket. 
There is Kenny Brooks in his seventh season as the head coach of Virginia Tech, trying to take the Hokies to yet another NCAA tournament. And for the first time, the Hokies looking to be in the driver's seat for hosting the first and second rounds. And a five-second called on Georgia Amor. Uh, do contest every pass. And, of course, baseline out of bounds is something that Virginia Tech usually executes really well. But Duke took everything away right there, forcing the, the turnover. So Virginia Tech on an 8-0 run at the moment. Cheyenne Day-Wilson running the point for the Blue Devils. Here comes Oliver. It's the bunny to fall and puts the Blue Devils back within four. Jordan Oliver, the Baylor transfers, a really talented player on both ends of the floor. He pushes you out on the floor, pushes you away from the basket with pressure on the basketball. There's Taylor Soul, who had a good game against the Blue Devils her last time out. Off to a good start here with an and one in the first quarter. That's an ISO for Taylor Soul to look inside and then drive it with her strong hand. You've seen her get that a lot this season. There it is, set up the whole side is clear. If the wing helps, you've got a wide open three. If they don't, Taylor Soul goes to the rim as well as anybody. So now Taylor Soul, Boston College transfer. And 19 in Cameron Indoor back in the last week of January. And completes the old-fashioned three-point play. Hokies are on an 11-2 run. Already off to a better offensive start than the last time out against Duke. And a bounce and a shot from the free throw line, and Celeste Taylor has another. Yeah, ba Amor back on her, and again, she could jump up over to Amor and, and take that shot without a lot of pressure. So the pressure forces Virginia Tech to call another timeout. 11-6 Hokies here in the first quarter. We got a good one. Don't go away. It's kind of how you grew up playing, so to get back outside is going to be super fun. Already with six points for Virginia Tech, starting out three of four. And Max, she only made one field goal the last time she took on the Blue Devils. Exactly, and they've done it in different ways. They had a screen across by Georgia Amor, the penetration and kick, and then the toss it into her and isolate one on one on Kennedy Brown, who did such a good job against her in the first game. Uh, take a look at that first game back in Durham 66 55. Virginia Tech lost that one by 11 to Duke. Hokies going into the fourth quarter were only down by one, but that Blue Devils defense really suffocated Virginia Tech there in that last quarter. Yeah, and you've seen glimpses of it so far, but Virginia Tech, when they've had the opportunity, they've executed well enough to be up 11-6. Taylor Soul trying to zigzag her way across the timeline on Day Wilson. See, that's a big part of the press. Now there's less than 20 seconds left for Virginia Tech to get a shot. Duke has to defend less time in the half court. Georgia Amor found herself an open spot and nails the shot. So a 13-6 lead now for the Hokies. Yeah, Taylor is bigger than Amor on the other end, but Amor is quicker than Taylor on this end. What a good matchup. Virginia Tech looking prepared against this defense so far. Celeste Taylor misses the mid-range. Amor with a long rebound. Mia Heidi into the game now. Kayla King drives to the hoop and misses. The rare two-point attempt by Kayla King. Yeah, I was about to say, you don't see many shots inside the perimeter for Kayla King. Now called on trailer. Yeah, the game is going to be physical. It's going to be interesting to see how it's officiated. Duke is physical on both ends. And Virginia Tech, they have to, they have to not respond they have to be as physical as they can be too did a good job against that last time they were home against Syracuse I think what's interesting to note you look at that last first quarter for Virginia Tech when they took on Florida State they nailed eight threes in that first quarter Virginia Tech has not even attempted a tray yet yeah and, and that has to do with Duke that they know where the shooters are and they do a good job of running them off that line Entry lob into Heidi, the two-lane transfer, and Kitley got a hand on the shot. Kitley again, one of the best shot blockers in the league, second in the ACC. 
Speaking of a block, answers with the one on the other end for Duke. And Kitley double team there. Yeah, Heidi returned the favor of the block shot on this end. Corisdale also coming in, another transfer for Carol Lawson's, Carol Lawson's team. A lot of their success, the Blue Devils, has been built on some of the players they've been able to get through the transfer portal. Off of the screen, Amor step back. First three attempted is good in this ball game, and who else but Georgia Amor to do so? Yeah, Taylor Gardner a long way out there, but she just kept on backing up. Both Amor and King can really shoot it from deep. 16-6, Virginia Tech leads by 10. And a charge. Taylor Soul forces the turnover, but right before that, Mac, this is a pretty jumper from Amor. Yeah, the little bit of crossover, back step, create just a little bit of space against Taylor, the bigger defender, and a great defender. Coach Scalls thinks she's their best, most consistent defender. Well, Georgia Amor, we talked about the fact that Liz Kitley struggled against the Blue Devils last time out and only hit one shot from the field. Amor only hit two in the entire game against the Blue Devils and Cameron. She's already two for two so far in this one. Ashley Owusu checks into the game for the first time. Deasia Gregg inside to Kitley. Another and one. In transition, the Hokies had a mismatch. De Jesus, De, De, Jesus, De, Jesus, <laughs> De Jesus ended up on Kinley. They recognized it right away, and Greg got it into her. A bit of a size mismatch there. Easy lob inside. De Jesus, the junior from California, gets booked with the foul. And Virginia Tech capitalizes on yet another and one. Hokies look fired up on the offensive end, 19 to six. Don't forget what they're doing on the defensive end. Taylor Soul trying to recover after the screen. Celeste Taylor not giving up easy. Yeah, she is a really good offensive player. Doesn't average a ton of points. You know, she only averages 12 points a game, but she, she could average 20 easily if she just set her mind to it because they just got a very balanced attack, and she does a good job of playing her role. Well, she's got the Blue Devils for six of eight. Here comes Kitley trying on Heidi now. Uh, miss. Pulled down. Corisdale on the feed up to Ashlyn Jackson. Hokies wanted a walk. Jackson, lots of physicality down low. Kitley was there. Here comes Owusu. Pulls up. No good. Kitley with the stick back. Transition's a good time to attack Duke. They don't give it up very often, but they did that time. The energy right now controlled by the Hokies offensively and defensively. Heidi, too short. Kitley affected that shot. That was Georgia Amor. What a step, and the Hokies are cooking. How good is Georgia Amor playing, as well as anybody in the ACC? 23 to 8, timeout, Duke. Hokie. Able to stay between your man and their basket. Really hard to stay in front of Georgia Amor. We talked with Kara Lawson before this, and she said what she liked out of the previous game that these two teams faced off was the fact that the Blue Devils made it hard for Virginia Tech to even get a shot off with every shot Virginia Tech took in that last game. It doesn't seem to be the same here in February. Yeah, you know, Heidi with the offensive rebound. And a save by Taylor. Taylor's so talented. Shot clock down to five. Another high pass. Jackson's going to have to shoot it. Buries the bucket for Duke. Yeah, you got to know Jackson will do that. Ashley Owusu closed out just a little bit short. Good shot by Duke. Good play. 
Al Jackson, a freshman from Texas. That bucket feels pretty big right now for the Blue Devils to try to build something here. Trailer, though, an answer with a three of her own, and an over the back foul called on Owusu. See, the closeout wasn't there. You got to get up on Jackson, make her put it on the floor. To give you some uh, context, Virginia Tech with 23 points. Duke has had seven of the last eight quarters, seven of the last nine quarters. They've held their opponents under double figures. Look at that steal from Amor. Just stuck her hand out on DeJesus. Good job by the Blue Devils to answer defensively, and now the Hokies have to slow it down. Even handoffs are contested by Duke. De Jesus, who just lost the ball, now matched up with Amor, coming off of a switch. Coristel on Amor. What a block. Had a little bit of size there. Down to four seconds. Picked away by Soul. And that'll be it for the first quarter. Virginia Tech looking sharp again. Another powerful first quarter for the Hokies, and the fans in Castle are loving it. All right, bring it in. Doesn't matter whether you're a player, a fan, a coach. Or an entire city. We all have a part to play. Hokies has 11 points. Taylor Guyman checking in for the first time for Virginia Tech. Yeah, Keanu Trailer at the point guard. Coach Brooks trying to give Georgia Amor a little bit of blow here at the start of the second quarter. Here's her three, and off the mark. Yeah, Jackson likes that. We saw her make one earlier. See what Taylor Guyman can do here, matched up with Jackson. Trailer running the point guard for Virginia Tech off of the screen. Driving inside. No good. And Guyman's got the ball, did not hit the rim. Hokies need to shoot it. Trailer doesn't know. And it was a shot clock violation before she got the ball up. So that Duke defense still very strong coming into this one. Look at the last four games. He got the win in the last game against Miami, 50 to 40. Yeah, yeah. When, when you could only score 50 and still win by double figures, you're guarding somebody. Another tough pass. And the defense so strong for Duke in that last game. They only scored as an offense 18 points against the Hurricanes. But like you said, Mac, they won by 10. A tie up. Possession arrow favors the Blue Devils. Uh, Kayla King, a name to watch out for for Virginia Tech. Going into that Duke game, was on a little bit of a skid, and these last couple of games has had some solid performances. 19 against Syracuse, 10 against NC State, and 12 against Florida State here at home with four threes. Yet another turnover. Kitley got a hand in there. Yeah, nice job by Kitley denying the ball into Kennedy Brown. Duke has two 6-6 centers in there that that are really tough for Kitley to, to work against on both ends of the floor. Yeah, Kennedy Brown right on cue. Was having none of that entry lob, so that'll be a good matchup to watch out for today. Both of them right at 6'6". Yeah, and they say Heidi's only 6'3", but she looks bigger than that to me. Right. Asia Gregg with a baseline shot. Got the roll and the bounce. The Asia Greg has made some big baskets for Virginia Tech during this winning streak. Yeah, quietly one of the more productive Virginia Tech players. Look at the stats, it's five points per game, but adds about six rebounds per game and makes some pretty clutch shots. And an offensive foul called on Jackson, so Virginia Tech will get the ball back with a 14-point lead. Yeah, she had that chicken wing out there on the baseline drive. Watch her with her offhand. Tries to keep Kitley out of the way. Good job by the officials of seeing that one. Now, Carol Lawson, a bit frustrated here. Do 
Georgia Amor back and running the point for the Hokies. Just a little back screen, cross screen for Kitley. Didn't get open. Good job by Duke taking that away. Running down inside of the final 10 seconds of the shot clock on every possession, Duke is committed to that yet another offensive foul. Yeah, Cheyenne Day Wilson got the better of Amore and Cameron, but tonight so far, Amore is getting it done on both ends of the floor. Now for Day Wilson, that is her first personal. Another look here. What do you think, Mac? Just a little out of control, but again, you know, every time we look at a block charge, we think this is why they're so difficult to call. He's starting out shooting hot, 10 of 19. You can start to tell that Duke defense anchoring down a little bit more. Off of the back iron, no good. A solid job by Brown to box Kitley out. Day Wilson. Well, Celeste Taylor has been one of the more athletic players on the floor. Kennedy Brown with a tough layup. Hokies pulled down yet another. <laughs> There's a lot of contact down low between Kitley and Brown on each end. There's a back screen for Kitley. Feet up top for Kayla King, one of that three. Defense was solid there from Day Wilson. Speaking of the solid defense, there's Balagoon. Good feed to Kitley, got fouled. Yeah, nice penetration. When they're denying everything and you can't get the ball reversed, putting it on the floor really can break their defense down. See, Kitley was wide open until the foul from behind. Oh, Liz Kitley. You can tell there was a lot of frustration in that game. And you see for a lot of teams the strategy to face off against Kitley, try to double down and really look at the fact that Trying to be out physical or out physical her down low. And the Hokies so far have tried to adjust. And in the first half, it certainly worked. That was the second foul on Balagoon for Duke. And Duke gets a little bigger with Coresdale at 6-3 coming in. Foul call down low. And it's on King. Virginia Tech really shot out of a cannon there in that first quarter. Went up 23 to 11. And Duke has yet to score here in the second quarter. So with a nice rebound and a crowd. of his screen, well, the defense still swarming on the guards for Virginia Tech. Amor chucks up a three. Well, she's turning into one of the most electric players in the NCAA. You cannot leave her open. Became the fifth Virginia Tech Hokie to be a thousand point score. Honored before the game. Lots of those points to get over the a thousand point mark have been three pointers. Celeste Taylor misses a tray of her own. Hokie still dominating. Well, the Blue Devils in a really tough offensive drought here. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech has only attempted four threes. Yeah, it's not, anymore with both of them. Yeah, not, not because they don't want to shoot the three. <laughs> Nothing there. Kitley boxes out and thought that Brown actually got a piece of it. Georgia Amor has been a big. Georgia Amor just joined that sorority of 1,000 point scores for Virginia Tech. And for Liz Kitley and Georgia Amor, both of them getting all of those points with this team here in Blacksburg. Taylor Soul, Kiana Trailer, as well as Ashley Owusu, 
all of them transfers, but not a lot of teams can say that they have a 1,000-point scores that play very actively on their own teams. Yeah, 5,000-point scores. That's a lot of weapons, and why Virginia Tech was picked second in the ACC in the preseason. Now that ACC preseason poll, the Blue Devils are picked seventh. And last year, this is a Blue Devils team that came into Blacksburg, and Virginia Tech beat them 77 to 55. Richardson gets the first point for the Blue Devils here in the second quarter, and they have really shocked a lot of people. And, and part of the amazing transformation is they weren't good defensively last year, and now they're the best defensive team in the ACC. Two losses in the ACC for Duke, one to North Carolina at Carmichael, the other to Florida State. They are undefeated in Durham. Yeah, I've heard Cameron's a pretty tough place to play. <laughs> <laughs> so is Castle tonight. Yeah. Three seconds. Amor step back. DeJesus able to pick down the rebound. Kayla King's going to get booked with a foul. And yeah, that was a really physical. I was watching that. There was a block out there by Richards, by, by Balligan. And uh, it continued. It actually was Reagan Richardson. And the contact continued when the ball bounced away. Well, that's Kayla King's second foul. That hurts Virginia Tech on both ends. She hasn't really been productive offensively, but she's an awfully good defender. Not a lot of offensive production by either team here in this second quarter. Virginia Tech with six, Duke with two, or excuse me, Duke with one. And that was just on the free throw from Reagan Richardson. And yeah, we were looking during the break. 17 to 8, Virginia Tech on the backboard. Duke has seven turnovers, and they haven't been to the free throw line yet. Wow. Asia Craig gets blocked. Forestdale. And an errant pass allows the Hokies to recover. And a fresh shot clock as well. Now eight turnovers. Been a big part of this basketball game. Virginia Tech has been forced to slow down. So far it has worked for the Hokies with a decent offensive game plan. Amor hits the deck. Yeah, she was trying to set a screen on Kennedy Brown, and Brown just bulldozed right on through the screen. And here comes Bia Heidi. Here you'll see the screen. Yeah, Kennedy Brown just wipes her out with the uh, upper body right there. Mia Heidi ready to check in now. Kennedy Brown going to the bench with a foul. Another foul. So the foul starting to add up here down low for the Blue Devils. That's a play Virginia Tech scores on almost every game. A little flare screen out the backside for Kitley. And Heidi did a good job. Watch Heidi close out on her, but she closes out on her too hard. Kitley's not open, but allows her to drive it to the lane and get to the free throw line. As Kitley now has 13 for Virginia Tech. Well, Kitley with 14 points. Virginia Tech eyeing almost a 20-point lead. Kitley and Amor have doubled Duke's score at this point, 24 to 12. What a layup. Celeste Taylor, if Duke's going to get back into this game, Number zero is going to have to do a lot more as yes, well. Yes, he is, and she is willing and able. Here comes Taylor Soul into the front court. We talked about a, a shocking beginning against Florida State. Virginia Tech doing sort of the same thing here against Duke. Not as many threes, but against a really tough Duke defense. The Hokies have found answers. Five on the shot clock. Amor for three. Air ball, Soul is there, has to take it back up. The shot goes, but no. Shot clock violation, and Virginia Tech. Yeah, you got to be aware of that shot clock, and she was just a little bit late. Great offensive rebound by Taylor Soul. Looks like Kennedy or Kenny Brooks was certainly in agreement there. So no argument for Virginia Tech. Officials will take a look at that at the end of the quarter. So if it does stand and you see two more points for Virginia Tech, you'll know what it's from. Offensive foul again for the Blue Devils. Yeah, Reagan Richardson, she was posting up down low, had a size advantage. Got a little too physical. And again, 
Virginia Tech with another defensive stop. Well, the press still on for Duke. Okies already have one five-second violation today. Tough pass, and Soul slaps the ball out to Amor. Duke's so good in defensive transition. Asia Gregg forces up a shot, and look on defense. Duke's still strong. They might be down by 17, but the defense still there just a tad bit. The offense just has not been able to convert. Duke has held Virginia Tech to just eight points in the second quarter. The problem, though, Duke has only scored three in the second quarter itself. Six on the shot clock. Oliver to Jesus. No good. Kitley right there. Again, no offensive rebounds. Only one for Duke in the game. And meanwhile, for Virginia Tech, that is their 21st rebound of the game. Duke with just 12. Off of the chest of De Jesus and a foul called on Kitley. Yeah, De Jesus read the play, jumped back in the passing lane, and Kitley went through her to try to get the ball. Kitley pops back right here. De Jesus read it, got in the passing lane. Yeah, I don't know about that, but uh, there was there was contact. I will say that. We'll see if Duke can get some sort of offensive firepower going here in the second quarter to close it out into halftime. Well, we know Taylor is awfully dangerous. Cheyenne Day Wilson hasn't gotten going like she did in the first game either. She got Taylor Soul on her. Corisdale, too hard on the three. Liz Kitley wins the defensive board. Nice job boxing out Mia Heidi. Duke with just one made field goal in the second quarter. They are one of 11. And on the shot clock, Amor kick out to Trailer. Deep in that shot clock again, Bailey. Trailer has to find a shot. It's got to be Kitley now. She found a way to do it. Look at the shrug for Kitley. She's feeling it. She gave it the Michael Jordan shrug. Normally, the stoic player is showing the emotion there. Day Wilson. Fine separation, no good on the shot, and Virginia Tech will carry a 33-14 lead at halftime. What a first half for the Hokies against the number nine team in the country. You see the long three by Jackson. Rare bucket for Duke. South Charlotte Hyundai is Carolina. And Duke, that last game at home against North Carolina could right. be a really big one in the standings. And, of course, Virginia Tech with the same situation, although they're going to finish on the road at Carolina and Georgia Tech. Now, how lucky are we? This is an incredible league for basketball and men's and the women's side. And what an absolutely deep year, especially in women's basketball. Bailey Angle and Mac McCarthy, glad to have you back with us. Taylor Soul jumping up with the offensive rebound, and Virginia Tech resets. Pick out a wide open shot for Liz Kitley, and then Taylor Soul with the run and rebound. Amor flings up the jumper. Not sure there's a shot that she can't make. She's got the little teardrop. Little floater, she can get to the rim, and obviously she can shoot the three. Largest lead for Virginia Tech. Now, if you would have looked at this game a few weeks ago, the Hokies only led in the second half 40 to 37. They now lead 35 to 14, and another rebound for Liz Kitley. Well on to her way with another double double here with her seventh rebound so far. Yeah, the, the Hokies are going to have to continue to play well, though. Duke plays a number of players, they've got more depth. Soul lost the ball and was wide open. She's gotten better and better as the season has gone on, learning what she needs to do and where she can score in Kenny Brooks' offense. What a transfer get for Kenny Brooks out of Taylor Soul, who had such a great career at Boston College. Celeste Taylor. 
Misses everything. Soul is right there. Great job by Georgia Amor defending that ball. Comes trailer under the basket. The Hokies, everything is falling for them right now. Great crowd, great atmosphere, and a great game. Right now, Virginia Tech dominating. Yet another steal. Taylor Soul wants a call. She will not get it. Kayana Trailer. She stops and goes, stops and goes. I referred to her early in the year as a human Roomba. I think she is a Roomba out there. <laughs> oh, first field goal made for Kayana Trailer. It just seems that every Hokie clicking on the offensive end so far. Taylor's soul, she'll go to the line. Yeah, Corsdale is bigger than soul, but soul is so athletic. Going with her strong right hand to the rim. This is that same play. Kitley's on one block. You take that away, and here comes Soul with the whole side to drive it. Well designed by Coach Brooks and his staff. Well, the Hokies have looked prepared today. What they sure say, every, everybody's got a plan until they hit you in the mouth, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, the Hokies have been the aggressor, really, on both ends. And, uh, you know, they've been great defensively, but, of course, on offense, they've, they've initiated a lot of the contact with their drives and screens and post-ups. Hokies with a 26-point lead over the number nine team in the country, a Duke team that has only lost three times this season. What a block, Kitley stuffed the shot. Feed up to Amor, a little overzealous. Hokies recover. And now slow it down. A little mismatch right here. Horsdale, I don't think she can stay in front of Amor. Lost the ball, Amor found it. A rumbling, tumbling. Offensive possession there for Virginia Tech. That was a bit out of control from the start. Possession yeah. arrow favors. Amor wanted to cross her over and take her and had lost the basketball. Good job by Corsdale just staying in front of her. Yeah, Corsdale, you got to give her a little bit of credit there. Georgia Amor has made a few opposing defenders look silly throughout the year. That was not one of those times. Oregon State transfer able to make it tough for her there. Drives in, right elbow shot, no good for Reagan Richardson. Nice job again, boxing out. Ball bounced before uh, anybody could get to the rebound. Really good job of boxing out that time by Virginia Tech. And whistle blows, Virginia Tech. Going to keep the ball. There's Celeste Taylor. Leading the scoring right now for Duke, still with eight points. Hokies jumping out to a 7-0 run here in the third quarter. Duke still forcing Tech to run down the shot clock. Georgia Amor has to move. Picked away by Taylor. Cheyenne Day Wilson trying her luck inside. What a layup, a circus shot able to go for Duke. Yeah, that was really nice. Well, for the sophomore guard from Canada, Mac, those are her first points of the night. Yeah, 18 in that first game when they beat Virginia Tech 66-55 in Durham. You mentioned the rookie of the year a year ago. I'm sold, trying her luck on Brown, almost got it off of the glass. In transition, Dave Wilson, one man back, little step through, left hand off the glass. Really a nice play by the sophomore out of Canada. So now DeAsia Gregg ready to check in. Day Wilson. Another player for Duke with her and Celeste Taylor, two of the more athletic players on the team. 
This is a Duke team that is poised to make a run in the ACC tournament as well as the NCAA tournament. Might need to see a little bit more offensive consistency out of their two best guards. Yeah, defense will carry you those nights where the shots don't go in, but you've, you've got to have some, some offensive. And they, and they have been good at times on offense, but certainly not where they've won basketball games. And tonight really struggling on the offensive end against, a, like you mentioned, a very prepared Virginia Tech team. Frustration mounting for Duke on the bench. Hey, Wilson running the point. Inside to Chorusdale, got some physicality there, and after the bump, no call. Deja Gregg able to pull down the rebound, and the Hokies continue to dominate the rebounding statistic tonight. Duke got the shot they wanted, didn't finish. The Hokies have dictated the pace of this game and have even found ways to succeed in this sometimes smothering defense of Duke. Five on the shot clock. Soul drives in. Follows her own shot. And still can't get it up. Here comes Day Wilson, one-on-one. -on -one. Good job by Amor. That's really hard to do. Stop a dribbler at you full speed. Well, that gets the approval of the Virginia Tech crowd. Celeste Taylor gets fouled hard. And the guard will go to the free throw line for two. We're still here in the third quarter. Hokies up big, 41-16 at Castle. Duke tournament resume. All of those losses that, were, that Duke has suffered this year have been against quad one teams. So that's UConn as well as North Carolina and Florida State. They might have their fourth loss here tonight in quad one, but they're not able to pull something out here. Yeah, but they've wrapped up a double bye. They've wrapped up hosting. It's just a matter of how high they're going to be seeded for the NCAA tournament. Now for Virginia Tech, still trying to improve their seeding right now as a three seed. Look against quad one, four victories and two losses, one of those to Duke back on January 26th with that net rank of 13 could potentially improve here if the Hokies continue to play the way they have played over the last four and now make it almost four and a half games counting this one. Yeah, this has to help in whatever ranking you're talking about if Virginia Tech can hold on here tonight. Hokies looking for their fifth straight victory. Down the feed to Kayla King. Kayla King hadn't had any good open looks. Almost had one right there in transition. Jump stop for Amor. Crafty footwork. Can't find the shot. Greg is there. The defense hanging tough for Duke. And Celeste Taylor able to sky to the glass. Beautiful play right there. Don't play against that half-court defense when you can. Get out in transition. Celeste Taylor running the floor. You know, that's another thing. You know, Duke hasn't scored much, so they haven't been able to set up their press. Now Duke right there with six points in the third quarter. That doubles the amount of points they scored in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Liz Kentley has put together an 18-point performance against the number nine Blue Devils. Again, a nice cross screen. Got Kentley wide open. Hey, Wilson, mid-range no good. Slapped out of bounds by Heidi. Yeah, the block, good block out by Kayla King. Giving away about three or four inches to Heidi. Taylor Soul is going to get a little bit of a rake, rake right here. I'm sure, she'll be in when she comes back in for the for the remainder of the game. Amor running the point, putting together a great performance. Twelve points, five of nine from the field. Greg feeds into Kitley. Good job by DeJesus. DeJesus with a really nice help side right there. And the kick will keep the ball with Duke. Well, Blue Devils, they had, you look at that last game against Miami, 
the offensive drought has continued from the second half of that game against the Hurricanes at home here into a game against Virginia Tech. They only scored 18 in the second half against the Hurricanes and ended up winning by 10 still. Jesus with the jump shot right there, got the foul. Break that golden rule I tell you about every game. Don't foul the jump shooter. And Jesus able to hit the first free throw. He had a big game in the first game against Virginia Tech off the bench coming in and scoring 10 points. Point guard spot had 28 points for Duke in that game between Dave Wilson and DeJesus. Now DeJesus made her first start of the season against Miami in the last game and came off the bench double digits against Virginia Tech. Now trying to cut into this 21-point lead. Kitley, like she got bonked on the head. We're seeing a little bit more energy and feistiness out of Liz Kitley tonight. And I think that the Virginia Tech crowd has certainly liked it. But right there, maybe a little bit more frustration for Kitley. She's gonna, she, there's a lot of physical play that she's gonna face here in the, the final few games of the regular season and into the tournaments. The Jesus, what a steal and a layup. Yeah, Greg's got to get the ball on. She could have thrown it ahead to Amor. That's one thing DeAsia Greg has had. She had a little tendency to turn the basketball over. She does a lot of good things off that bench for Kenny Brooks, though. Amor gets blocked. Horisdale had a full palm on the ball and now able to pick up the loose ball for Duke. Inside of a 20-point deficit. Mia Heidi, her pass picked away by Kitley. And Kitley lost the ball, but it goes off of Duke. Georgia Amor with the drive. There's Corsdale, 6'3", long arm, blocking that shot. Duke comes away with it, but no points on the other end, but they do get to set up their press. Soul a little bit better handler than Greg into the game now. And Taylor Soul rejoins. She does have seven points here today. Kayla King. Oh, the threes have been rare, trying to wake up the Hokie crowd here. 46-24, Kayla King, her first points of the night. Hadn't been open all night, but when she got open, bam. To Jesus, another block. Boy, Virginia Tech's defense has been so strong. Kitley, a baseline jumper too short. That was Jordan Oliver. The Baylor transfer picked away. King slows it back down. Georgia Amor, boom. Timeout called. Virginia Tech is loving it. 49-24. It's electric in Blacksburg. To shave or not to shave. Back-to-back -back threes for Virginia Tech. The Hokies have jumped up back to 25 here with a 49-24 lead. Duke can cut the lead under 20 for the first time in a while, but the Hokies answer with two big threes. They've only shot eight tonight, but they've made four, including those last two. Georgia Amor has three of them. Kayla King got open for a three. That is her only attempt of the night, so she's batting 1,000 from beyond the arc against Duke here and almost got another steal. Inside of a minute left to play here in the third quarter. Virginia Tech has put together a complete basketball game. Another Beautiful good layup. Play. Beautiful play. Pass from Richardson into Kennedy Brown. Little reverse layup. That was beautiful basketball. They haven't had many easy looks. Oh, Kayla King. A little contact there. So these are Kennedy Brown's first points of the night. Oof. Balagoon. 
That didn't feel the need to take a look at it. Looked like a box out with a high elbow right there. Basketball play. Got a trailer off of the sole screen. Pick and roll, picked away. So 22 seconds left to go. Cheyenne Day Wilson. Only one bucket so far for Day Wilson. Richardson lobs a pass into the baseline, and the Hokies can put together one final shot here before the end of the third quarter. Yeah, Hokies didn't really handle that ball screen great. Brown was open, but errant pass. Taylor Soul, see if she's going to be the one to take the buzzer beater. Comes Soul from the free throw line. Everything is clicking for Virginia Tech. 51 26. In transition, we talked about Soul being a better handler against the press. Take it to the ACC and nothing. East Charlotte needs. Headed into the fourth quarter, Duke coming into this game was branded as one of the top defenses in the country. Today has been a different story against Virginia Tech. Mac, you look at that field goal percentage, 34%, eighth and D1. The Hokies right now are shooting close to 50% from the field. Yeah, and the effort is there, but Virginia Tech has just executed better offensively, added a wrinkle or two, but just doing a better job one-on-one. -on -one. If you're wondering how close we rounded up from 46.3%, the Hokies shooting the lights out. And from three-point land, Virginia Tech has only attempted eight threes, but the Hokies have hit four of them. Three of them from the star from Australia right there, Georgia Amore. Crossover off the front of the rim. Brown there for Duke. The crowd is just like ready to erupt on every play, especially with Georgia Amore handling the basketball. Well, Amor has sparked for Virginia Tech. The Hokies coming into today have played some of their best basketball and arguably the best basketball we have seen out of the Kenny Brooks era, which is a real testament because Kenny Brooks has had some good teams in his seven years here. This Virginia Tech team is really starting to turn the heads of people who watch a lot of Hokies basketball over the last few years. You know, one thing amazing about the Kenny Brooks era here, like you mentioned, seven years, each team has gotten better. Uh, every single year, they're, they're a little more talented, add a, add a little bit more depth, add a little bit more skill, and this is certainly his best stop outfit. And, and you know, that's with Ashley Owusu, who's a third-team All-American at Maryland, who's been injured and really hadn't gotten back into the rotation very much yet. Yeah, Virginia Tech has not gone deep into its bench. Hokies have played only three players off of the bench today, and that's Greg Owusu and Taylor Guyman. Owusu and Guyman have not really piled on minutes against the Blue Devils, so it also goes to show the conditioning of the Hokies. Wow, here comes Amor. Day Wilson hit the deck. Ten seconds. Kitley trying to work on Brown. Shot clock rolling down. No good. Well, Kennedy Brown still keeping Kitley honest. Picked away. Hokies will continue to push it, but if they, if they don't have something in transition, you, you, you don't mind uh, eating the clock if you're Kenny Brooks. No, Hokies do not look like they're in a hurry. Up by 23. Amor with a step, stripped away. Cheyenne Day Wilson, here she comes. Hokies need to continue to stay with that urgency on the defensive end. Gave Valagoon an open look. And Valagoon cutting it down to 20. A rare three in this ball game. We have not seen a lot of threes made, which is more shocking when you look at Virginia Tech, a team that really lights it up from three-point land. The Hokies have only hit four for Duke, just their second tray of the night made. 
This time of year, though, teams know exactly who can shoot the three, how they get their threes, and you can take them away some nights. Taylor Soul storming in. And a foul called on Duke. So Virginia Tech up by 20 on Duke. Lots of basketball left to be played, not only in this game, but for the rest of the season for both of these teams. Virginia Tech right now coming in at third place in the ACC, trying to potentially not only improve the seeding that they have going into the ACC tournament, they need some help, but an ACC regular season championship is still something the Hokies have an eye on. Amor wide open, layup bounces away. Yeah, I think Amor was a little surprised she was that wide open. Coming off the out of bounds, a little handoff. So take a look at that. Quad one opponents, NC State, who has had a couple of tough games, a turnover for Celeste Taylor and company in Duke. North Carolina, a team Virginia Tech played pretty tough here at Castle, has to go back down there to Carmichael in the state of North Carolina, where they did not play well last year against the Tar Heels. Yeah, that's going to be a really difficult game. NC State, you never know. And Westmore's group is not playing well right now, but you know they're capable of playing well. And, of course, at Georgia Tech, Nell Fortner does such a good job, especially on the defensive end. There are no easy outs left for the Hokies. Now, what more can you ask for? More competitive games in the ACC. Now down to 10 seconds. Amore steps back for the three. Hokie's a little cold here in the fourth quarter. And yeah, good defense by Duke again. Another three off the back end of the iron. Virginia Tech two on two. Georgia Amore and Kayana Trailer. What a team. Yeah, with that speed, it became two on one. Back on the other end for DeJesus. She's just solid. You got to stay between her and the basket and make her shoot over you. She got an angle, used her body, protected the basketball, and got a basket. Still a 20 point lead for Tech. Sprints under the basket, bounce feed to Kitley. Wanted a foul. That one clunked off of the shot clock. Now Duke ball. Virginia Tech in transition. Two on one, got the numbers. Nice bounce pass. You don't want to play five on five against Duke. Two on one is a whole lot better. Bounce into Wilson. Now she'll go to the line. Now four fouls on Elizabeth Kitley was two rebounds away from yet another double-double. Deja Gregg. Role player for Virginia Tech lined up against Heidi for Duke. Yeah, I thought that was Elizabeth Kitley's fourth foul, but that earlier one she got, they may have given it to Deja Gregg instead. Okay. Duke has to score with the clock stop. Virginia Tech does not want to put them on the free throw line. Yeah, so it looks like, as a clarification, yes, Liz Kitley only with three. Hokies keeping the ball here. And the last foul was on Taylor Soul. Inside of the final six minutes, Soul to the glass. Now Soul will go to the line. Taylor Soul has been such a good addition to this basketball team. The, the transfer from Boston College. She can put it on the floor. And here she is beating one of the best defenders in the league and going strong enough to draw the foul. Well, here is Soul ready to go to the line again. 
Talk about those transfers. Duke has dipped into the transfer market. Virginia Tech has. And look how it's turned their seasons from last year to this year. Uh, both of these teams with solid years in 2022, but now both of them really legit solidified contenders for ACC titles here in the 23 season. Talked about Seoul getting to the free throw line, and she, she has become one of the top ten free throw shooters in the ACC at 75%. Brings the Hokies back up by 21. Mia yeah, Heidi, another one of those transfers. Dishes off to Oliver. Got it. Yeah, that time, sole guest on the defense opened up the driving lane, and Oliver made a really nice play going baseline. She anticipates her going back to the top off the ball screen, and instead Oliver goes to the baseline. Smart play by the Baylor transfer. Speaking of transfers. Free throws no good, bounces out to Kayla King. So Virginia Tech coming into this game had won four in a row, five minutes and 15 seconds for making it a clean five in a row. They have been cold here in the fourth quarter. Duke actually outscoring the Hokies right now in the final period, 10 to four. Liz Kitley trying to change that. Missed the first shot, muscled up the second to go. Now she's got 20. Liz she has more than redeemed herself for that one for nine in Cameron. Now Liz Kitley, the defending ACC player of the year, ACC preseason player of the year as well. Too short from DeJesus. Now moving here on to the next possession. Here comes Kiana Trailer. Smart play. Didn't have the numbers. Now Liz Kitley is going to go to the line. 57-36 brings us to another break here in the fourth quarter. Hokies up big. South Charlotte. Well, this is interesting. Look around the ACC. Notre Dame, who is currently in second in the ACC right now with an 11-3 ACC record, down by three to Louisville, who is fourth in the ACC. So a little bit of jarring there between and jockeying for position in the top four for that double bye. So take a look here. ACC standings entering tonight. Virginia Tech, like we talked about, has a chance, Mac, in an ACC regular season title. They need some help, and they need to keep winning. Yeah, and, and Louisville in the same situation. They were picked 1-2 in the preseason, and they, they are both trending toward the top right now, but got to go through Duke and Notre Dame. Louisville's doing their part. Virginia Tech doing their part tonight. Liz Kitley misses the first free throw. Virginia Tech does have the head-to-head -head in the regular season. Picked up a win against Louisville on January 12th. Won that one 81-79. One of the better basketball games we saw here at Castle. Good drive. Duke's starting to pick up some offense in the fourth quarter. Might be a little too late. Now that's what we were talking about at halftime. Putting it on the floor, taking it to the rim, forcing Virginia Tech to either foul or get a high percentage shot. But like you said, Got a big deficit with four minutes to go. It was a back over to Trailer. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Trailer trying to work on Oliver. Five seconds now. Georgia Amor can't get any help off of the glass. And Cordesdale pulls down another board. Virginia Tech continues to dominate on the backboard. 37 to 21 on the backboard tonight. Taya Corsdale kick out into the corner. Whistle, and now going to the line, it's Ashlyn Jackson. So Duke up against Virginia, NC State, and North Carolina. So they have to go to Charlottesville in a couple of games at Cameron against some pretty talented opponent, opponents in their own right. UVA without Mir McLean, but they still had a really big win the other day against NC State. None of those are going to be easy for the Blue Devils. Now down to 17.
Yeah, Virginia, that a big win. What a turnaround for the Cavaliers this year. And you know, came into Blacksburg, Virginia Tech handled its business against the Wahoos, but oh, UVA is another team to watch out for in the next few years. Yeah, Coach Mox has had a really good first year. That day, and Duke are probably the two biggest surprises in the league. Taylor Soul lost the ball, stays with Tech with five seconds. Yeah, can't really stress that enough. Duke, although it has not gone their way tonight, Kara Lawson has turned this team into a legitimate contender here in year three. Amor, though, yeah. wide open for three. You can't do that. Yeah, Virginia Tech has run that play every single game. Duke fell asleep. Amor comes off for the handoff. No one even near her. Amor, another game with 20 points. Ashlyn Jackson. It's her second three of the night. Yeah, you got to make her drive it. She can, she can get hot from out there. We've seen her make a couple long-distance shots already tonight. Third straight game for Georgia Amore with 20-plus points. Had 27 last time, or excuse me, 25 against Florida State, 27 against NC State the game before that. Tech willing to go deep in the shot clock. And it's going to be Amor to take the shot. Long two, no good. Long rebound, though, for DeAsia Gregg. They should have just pulled it out. Worked the clock again right there. Jackson. Starting to see that she's building a little confidence, and this does not look good for the Hokies, at least on the initial thud. And that seems to be okay. Asia Gregg, the Georgia Tech transfer. She's a really smart basketball player. Thought she should have pulled it out that last time, but uh, she has given the Hokies a lot of good minutes during this stretch where they've won seven out of eight. Forsdale has now fouled out for Duke. And the Asia Gregg goes to the line. 17 point lead for Virginia Tech. The Asia Gregg. This is the first one, but you know, Mac, we, we were talking a few breaks. This is not how we expected this game to go. We thought we were going to have a really close, tight game because, like we said at the beginning, this is one of the more highly anticipated rematches of the season. And Virginia Tech came out shooting lights out against a great defense in Duke. Yeah, I don't think anybody expected this kind of game. And uh, give give Kenny Brooks and his staff a lot of credit. They've been gearing toward this since that last time they played in Durham. And they've been playing really good basketball. Should have expected them to play well, but to, to blow out uh, the number one team in the league, yeah, not sure anybody would have bet on that one. Swing into the Asia Greg, no foul called, and Kitley palmed the ball out of bounds. Up by 16 against Duke. Oliver turns around. They have tried their luck inside, but the Blue Devils have came up short here many times in this game. Almost doubling the score of Virginia Tech in the fourth quarter, but like we had said earlier, not enough with a minute left to go. One minute, one minute remaining. And now that NC State game here on Sunday looms even bigger. Three on the shot clock, Amor. Just going to take a shot clock violation, and it almost looked like that was intentional, and you can see by Kenny Brooks' reaction there, yeah. it was not. Yeah. If, <laughs> if, if it was, it was a mistake. No, I, I thought that was like, are you going to take a knee like in football? But no. DeJesus misses. Kitley with a rebound. Eighteen seconds left. See if Virginia Tech gets another shot up here. Really get the crowd into it once more. Kitley to the glass. No whistle. And the buzzer sounds. It will be another shot clock violation. And 
Duke. Looks like they're going to take one more shot to Jesus. Feeds inside. The shot will not count. And for Virginia Tech, the Hokies pull off their largest victory ever against a top 10 team. They had previously beaten UNC back in 2010 by 15 now, taking down the Duke Blue Devils by 16. 61 45. What a win for Kenny Brooks and company. Georgia Amore and Elizabeth Kitley, we said they had.